Uh, so today we are going to discuss about the different type of controllers that we have in control systems. So they are like for example P controller, P, PI, PD and such type of controllers. So before starting let me just write down the heading here. So P, PI, PID controller. So this is our topic of discussion now. First of all, why do we need these controllers? It is not, suppose we have a process and that process is controlled by a certain system. Now, there will be errors or there will be disturbances in the system because of which we would not be getting the output as we want to or as we desire. So for that, we need some kind of controllers which can control our process and give us the desired input. For that we have this certain set of controllers that we are going to discuss. So let's start with the very basic controller that we have. So we will start with the P type of controller. So it is known as a proportional controller and in short it is known as a P type. So I'll write it here. Proportional controller or the P type. Now, what does this controller do? You all must be thinking, okay, I have written a certain name, P, P, I, P, I, D, and what all this stands for. So, the names are given or these controllers are named in a way in which they function. So, what a proportional controller does is, it tries to reduce the steady state error of the system. So, you already know what is a steady state error and we have discussed previously what are those. So, what our controller does it is, it tries to reduce the steady state error of the system. So, you see it reduces. So, this controller does not completely eliminate our steady state error. So, if we use this controller, our steady state error will be reduced, but it will not be completely eliminated. So, what this controller does is, so let us write the basic equation of a P-type controller. So, here we have, we can write P is equal to KP E0 plus P0, where our P0 is the controller output with no error. Let me write it here, controller with no error and this term here Kp that is a proportional gain. So what happens is we increase our gain and we decrease our steady state error. Let me write it here. We increase Kp and decrease our steady state error. So the basic question what you all might be thinking is why not we assume Kp to such a value that uh, we have no steady state error. Like might be we increase Kp to say like a certain amount of value and this steady state error completely eliminates but in reality in practice this is not possible so even if we increase kp after our error reaches a certain value this will no longer reduce it will in fact keep the same and there will be oscillations in the system so after a certain value it doesn't make any sense even if we increase our proportional gain because our steady state error is not going to be eliminated. It in fact would give rise to oscillations in the system. I'll just note it down also so that um, we are very clear what we are talking about and discussing here. Increasing Kp after a certain limit won't reduce the steady state error ESS. So you see, so this is a proportional gain controller which reduces the steady state error. 
now let us go to the next type of controller that is an integral controller let me write it here the integral controller so now there is a certain reason why first we talked about the proportional type controller and then next we are talking about the integral type controller so this controller tries to reduce what our P controller could not do so what it does is it eliminates the steady state error so you see we have come to the next step where our new controller is able to not only reduce but at the same time eliminate our steady state error this eliminates e ss but again there is a loophole loophole here when we use such type of controller the speed of the response is an issue like it is not very fast it is not a speedy response and at the same time the overall stability of the system also has a negative effect when we use a only integral type of controller so speed of response is is not very fast and also the overall stability of the system so this both has a negative impact so you see what happens so because of this what happens is our rise time increases and also it gives rise to oscillations in the system so here rise time increases and oscillations rises so you see how it happens so here it does not eliminate oscillations so this does not get eliminated this does not happen here so this was our second type of controller the integral controller the next that we are going to discuss is the derivative controller let us see how that looks like so let me write it so also uh, we wrote here the equation of the p type controller here let us write the equation for our integral type controller also so here we can write p is equal to k naught dep by dt so this is our integral type how it is related next that we are going to discuss is a derivative type controller let me write it here or it is also known as the d type controller so what this controller does is before discussing here let us see what happens here so this controller here it cannot predict the future error so what is happening here is a steady state error comes and it eliminates it cannot predict in the future or in the next moment what is going to come what kind of error is going to be developed in our system so now what our new friend here the derivative controller it does is it predicts the future error of the system so you see it has become it has evolved we were in the p type controller then we came to our integrated controller and here we have our derivative which is more advanced compared to this two since it can predict the future errors in our system so I'll write here can predict future errors in system so this together here it's not only the integral controller it's the pi controller which does it together so here we can actually write p i you know this two combined together and here 
combined together is the uh, so first we'll discuss the derivative controller so coming back to our derivative controller so again here we are combining the p and d controller together so it is not a complete derivative controller but in fact it is that we are going to discuss now is a p d controller similarly here what we discussed was together a p i controller i have written an integral controller but it is a combined p i controller and regarding this formula also i'll come back again because i know you must be having a doubt here but let us first finish the derivative controller and then we come back so what our derivative controller does is it predicts the future errors in the system so how it does it does is it controls the output so suddenly if there is a change in the output we get it in the system and then we know how to rectify it and make our system work so it does not depend on the error signal so it doesn't depend on the error signal and so what we can do is we can eliminate if any error is going to come in the future and since it is combined with a p controller so it will always it will reduce the steady state error and it will have a derivative of the signal of the error signal derivative of the error signal now let us go back to the formula of or try to relate the p and the d the controllers together so what we can write is p is equal to the proportional gain kpep plus kp kd the derivative gain dep dt plus p0 where p0 is a controller output and these are the errors that have come with the output because there will be some kind of disturbances in the system and here kd is the derivative gain so you see how we have advanced from the p controller we had our pi controller here then we have the pd controller here and next what we will be having is a combination of all the three our last one it is the p i d controller before proceeding to the pid controller let's come back here to our integral controller because what i wrote here was just this formula here but now since we have a pi so we have to combine it together so let us see what here k looks like so we oh, let me write it here so uh, let us come back to the integral controller and let us write the formula for the pi controller here so we can write p is equal to kpep plus kp ki ki is a uh, controller gain of the integral controller integration 0 to t e p d t p t of o where p o is the controller output the last that we are going to discuss is the pid controller so this pid controller has a lot of advantages compared to a simple p controller or a pi controller or a pd controller the main advantage is that it has zero steady state error so it has zero steady state error it has a faster response time that means it has a low rise time the advantages here so what we did was we had a pi system we added a derivative so by doing that what we did is we eliminated the overshoots and the oscillations which were occurring in the output of the system so doing this we eliminated 
oscillations and overshoot in the output of the system. Now let us try or let us write the equations of the PID controller. So let me write it here. We can write P is equal to KP the proportional gain plus this one here KP K uh, D because we have the uh, derivative gain also then we have DP by DT plus P zero so you see uh, here we have and yes you're right we have to include the integral term also so yes you're right we have to add the integral term here which is plus we get the integral term from here kp ki integral of 0 to t ep dt pt of 0 so you see we have the pd terms here the pi terms here so you see how this is the pid controller and normally this pid controller is preferred because it has a zero steady state error it eliminates oscillations overshoots rise time and it also has no dependency on noises so you see compared to all those how a pid controller is more advanced and sophisticated so let us just quickly revise what we did here here we started talking about the different type of controllers that we use in our control system the first one that we discussed is the p type of controller which reduces the steady state error by increasing the proportional gain but we cannot increase the proportional gain to such a value so as to completely reduce the steady state error so it reduces up to up to a certain value and then our steady state error no longer decreases so it does not get eliminated so this was a p type controller next what we did was we added another controller another term to a p, p controller that was the p i controller here this one we added the integral controller to a p controller and that gave us to a proportional integral controller now what this pa controller does is try to overcome the difficulty or the inconvenience that we had in the p type controller so this pa controller eliminates the steady state error but again it has a disadvantage is that it does not it has the speed response and the overall stability has a negative impact and also it has a higher rise time so higher rise time means a less response time and oscillations are not eliminated so for that what we did was we went to the third type we added a derivative controller to a proportional controller here what happens is we do not know about the future errors that are occurring in the system what this new type where we added a derivative to our p controller does is it tells us about the future errors it gives us a derivative of the error signal and based on that we have a we can predict the future errors and also our oscillations are reduced so this was our pd controller that we discussed here next what we did was we combine all the three controllers pid what happened is the, the moment we had all the controllers together we have zero steady state error we have faster response we have low rise time our, our noises are eliminated our oscillations overshoots are eliminated so these are the ppad controllers and it is very important from a general point perspective and also from your exam point of view so kindly pay importance when you go through this topic